Yo, what's up, man? Not much. How are you doing? This is Calm, a top professional Rocket League player for version one. Is there a shot coming? Calm's there! What he doesn't know right now in this moment is that I, a lowly grand champion, am about to completely school him in a way he's never experienced before. I present to you the Rocket League Eversax Olympics, an eight event challenge that tests the most fundamental skills of Rocket League down to their core. When I first saw this map come out, I originally just thought, wow, this map is so cool. And then my second thought was, wait, I have an idea. I quickly rushed to Discord and found one of the best professional Rocket League players I could find. I carefully crafted a completely innocent message about a sequel to a video we already made together five months ago. After hitting send, all I had to do was wait. Now you're probably thinking, Wait, and what kind of plan do you even have here? Calm is literally miles better than you. It's not even close. Well, instead of just waiting for the recording session that was now five days away at this point, I downloaded the map and immediately got to work. There were eight total events that each gave you a score from zero to 10 based on your performance in them. Since this was just my first run, I already knew I wasn't gonna be happy with my performance, but this was, let's just say, not ideal. What? That's it? No shot, I got 2.8. <laughs> it was clear I needed a ton of practice to even have a chance at competing with Calm. So I went into the training section of the map. You can basically select whichever event you want and get unlimited attempts in time with it. The first event, the flick, was literally as simple as how far can you flick the ball? So I figured that's definitely something I can improve easily. Still not that much. Try a moxie flick. So I do that, something like that. Oh, there we go. Okay, 944, that's already so much better. As good as that flick was, it would still only be an 8.2 out of 10, which means there's gotta be a better technique out there. It was little things like these that I had to take note of in order to have a chance at beating Kong, along with a bunch of practice before we actually faced off against each other. Some may call that cheating. I like to call it strategic planning with a hint of manipulation. I also kept trying for the next 50 attempts and couldn't top that one flick that I did on like my third try until finally... Oh my gosh. Let's, let, let's just do that again. I did not do that again, actually. But at least I proved that I'm capable of getting a flick that powerful, which is a step in the right direction. That's faster. 123, okay. The pinch was another event I thought I could pretty easily get good at if I practiced it. Again, this is literally just a single hit on the ball, so theoretically I should be able to get this down with practice. The pinches are just so inconsistent. Like I'm trying to do the same thing every time and sometimes it's like a laser beam and sometimes it's just that. Ugh, okay. Only 94, like. It's a brand new day. There's a lot of work to be done, so it's probably best I mentally prepare. Instead of jumping in with the mindset of knowing that I need to beat Calm by the end of the week, let's just focus on taking this one step at a time. The dribble course was actually pretty chill, which is honestly surprising. It's basically like a mini version of the Eversax dribbling challenge, which if you know anything about that, you know it's not exactly the most fun activity for people who aren't already insane at dribbling. But I guess this wasn't as stressful for me because there wasn't any pressure on completing the whole course. It was mainly just about getting the first few levels done as quickly as possible since I'd only have a three minute window to get as far as I can in the course anyway. So I spent this practice time trying to perfect those early, not so challenging levels. The aerial course was actually pretty similar. It's about how far you can get in this rings map in a certain time limit. This one I was even more confident about because once I figure out the optimal path and boost usage for each level, it was pretty easy to replicate, at least compared to the dribble course. So I actually practiced all the levels because I figured I actually had a chance at making it through the entire course during my actual runs if I practiced enough. I'm gonna have you stop right there. I have a special message for you. Have you ever thought about making your own video game? I know I have, I've had some thoughts flow in and out here and there, but they always seem to stop there because I always have no idea what I'm doing when it comes to actually 
making the game. If you've experienced that same thing, fortunately, Southern New Hampshire University has the solution to that, and they're the sponsor of today's video. SNHU has one of the largest accredited nonprofit online degree offerings in the US. In their game development program, you'll learn how to create realistic, dynamic gameplay experiences. That includes things like programming languages like C++ and Java, and 3D modeling and texturing, and just so much more. Courses are taught by industry experts who will teach you all about the growing field of game programming, all with the goal of turning that idea that popped up in your head one day into a reality while making a career out of it as well. All of SNHU's programs are extremely flexible, no set class time so you can work when and where you want. If you're ready to strive for the career you love, SNHU's game development program can help. Go to snhu.edu slash and that's also linked right at the top of the description. Thanks again to SNHU for sponsoring the video. Now let's get back to it. There we go. That's so good right there. Oh, yeah. Nice. 125. Oh, oh my god. Okay, good. Counts. I just broke 50 for the first time. Nice. Nice. Oh. Get me there. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh, I did it. Let's go, dude. Let's go. Yes, let's go. This is so good. <gasps> 4,000? Let's go. Still, that 54 is still not bad. That, that's, we're making a lot of progress. I now had just one day left before the big day. At this point, I could pretty much tell how good I was at each event. There wasn't a whole lot of room for personal improvement within each one anymore. It all just came down to metagaming. Like I imagine the shooting one, he's just gonna demolish me at, but it's the ones that have like a specific map or path that you have to kind of memorize in a way. The maps like the parkour ones, that's where I think I can really gain a ton of those points back. So that's why I'm putting more effort into those. I also realized that in the tube event, it's not about how long you last in the tube and how many obstacles you get by, but it's instead about how far down the tube you go. So I started practicing practicing it in a way where I'm basically speed running it and trying to go as far forward as possible just to get a few extra points. By the end of the day, I figured I was as ready as I'll ever be. Okay. Whew. I think that was my best run yet. Uh, and I think I'm just about ready. Yo, what's up, man? How much are you doing? So yeah, it's basically similar to the last one, except this time uh, we will not be screen sharing. So I want it to be like a kind of a reveal at the end. We can talk to each other about like how good we feel about our performance, but I don't want to say any numbers. Okay. This one, I feel like you just going for distance is kind of a different skill, I guess. Yeah, I was practicing my technique a lot before. I'm not getting anything close to what I was getting beforehand. I just got a pretty good one. I'm not gonna lie, I kinda picked the, I'm on the pinch now and I picked the wrong side. I think I prefer the right side on the pinch. Do you let the pinch roll all the way to the wall or do you push it? Uh, I touch it once and then I try to pinch it. The start of the run was better than I could have hoped. Super good scores on the flick and the pinch. The aerial course was one that I practiced a ton and I wasn't sure if it was gonna pay off because every so often I'd have a run where I'd just get stuck. But luckily today, it totally did pay off. I figured at this point I must have been ahead of calm, but I couldn't be completely sure I would be by the end because there were still those few events left that I knew I wasn't as confident in. I'm curious how much you're just gonna like crush me by it, especially on the individual scores. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if you're in the lead right now. Oh, really? I'm just worried I'm gonna lose. <laughs> you're worried gonna lose? Yeah. I wouldn't be worried. I might be I a hope. career ender. <laughs> I haven't been talking, have I not been talking down to myself enough? Is that why you're worried? Yeah, I don't know how good that was. 
Okay, so I actually, I, I completed the Eversax dribbling challenge. This honestly feels harder. Maybe it's just because I'm not used to it, but it, it gets progressively more difficult way faster, I guess. I haven't dropped the ball yet. I'm many levels in. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, you're definitely doing better than me. I didn't drop the ball up until this one, and then I haven't made it past it. Oh. Uh... God, I need to at least make it past this level. Come on. And as far as I know, even the world records... They don't have like a perfect score and everything. And they've been like no lifing this as far as I know. Guys, I didn't realize it at the time, but there were many moments in this run where I just went completely silent from focusing so much. I was on track to beat even my own personal best score overall. There was no hint of cracking under pressure for me like I thought there might be. Only question was, how would a pro's run compare to it? It's just, it's all about one good attempt. I gotta remind myself of that so I don't just get tilted. Oh, my last attempt's gonna be my best attempt. That's good. Okay, that's a pretty good one. <laughs> a pretty good one? Okay, that, that means it was insane. If I've learned anything from talking to pros. I, I literally was trying to specifically like practice too before I came into this because I was so awful at it and I just couldn't get past a certain point. Yeah, I've, n I've never, I don't, I don't know if I could ever beat the tube. The time limit is just like, I, I, I just ignore it because there's no way I'm ever going to be like. Yeah, I'm not getting there. Yeah. <laughs> I can chill out. There's just one part I straight up just can't beat. But I honestly, I'm not that worried because I don't think there's any way you're beating it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's any way either. It's, it's, a, it's a part that I just don't fathom like even being possible. I not get okay, past that okay. parkour. All right. <laughs> it, this ended up being not too bad in the end. Woo! I would not be surprised if I lost. All right. Ready? Uh, we're we're going to post it at the same time. All right. I am ready. Three, two, one, go. You beat me. Yeah, I knew it. I, I did so Let's bad. Go. <laughs> no, that was it was actually like horrifically bad. <laughs> okay, okay, well here's the thing, Com. I, I have a bit of a confession. Uh -huh. Um I, I have been hard grinding this map for the past five days in order to beat you. Yeah, I mean I I practiced it for a few hours and I was a lot better when I was practicing, I don't know. <laughs>